to tell you a little bit about how I met our keynote speaker, Micah Hirakawa. Um, I first met him at the SOTF conference uh, 2012, last year, and I signed up for his workshop, Superheroes Among Us. Some of you are going to be participating in that today. And I didn't know what to expect, but like many of you, I went with um, hope that I would learn something to help our students at Montessori Haleokiki who um, face every day with ADHD, dyslexia, and other non-specific learning abilities. Um, and it was a packed room, people standing room only, and I was, even though as a Montessori and I already held a deep-seated belief that we follow each child, Micah's presentation and his personal story of growing up and also his personal journey as an educator really inspired me to go back into my own community and share my excitement over what he's talking about. Um, and I hope that you will glean the same from that today in our keynote and also if you attend his workshop. Um, he's currently the director of music at Le Jardin Academy on Oahu. And um, he's a researcher, he's a passionate educator, He's a risk taker to inspire his students, all of us, and also the parents of these students. I think it's important that we mention them too, and Michael's really about reaching each and every person that that's a part of these students' lives. So as we join together today to talk about inclusivity, I ask you to give a warm welcome, aloha to Micah Hirakawa. so much. Wow, there's a lot of you in here. <laughs> I, was, I was just amazed that this room could fill so many people. I, you know, I thought, I thought to myself, this must be Oahu. <laughs> there's so many, I didn't know this many people live on Maui. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm really excited to be here and um, I looked at the schedule and they said that I'll be speaking here till two o'clock today. <laughs> so I decided to write um, quite a long talk. It's 19 pages. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to start with page one, the early, the history of music, sometimes called historical musicology. So let's look at this. The highly diverse subfield of the broader disciplines of musicology that studies music from a historical viewpoint. In theory, music history can refer to the study of history of any type of genre of music, rock, rap, classical, let's see what else is out there, there's folk, there's all different types of music out there, I mean, there's over 200 different genres out there, so really, truly, we could go on and on and on, but let's get into the instrumentation. There's woodwinds, there's brass, there's, we have uh, percussion. So, I've worked really hard on these slides. <laughs> so, there's all different types of music out there that we can study. I played the saxophone when I was in high school. Actually, I had to play the trombone because I wasn't that cool. But then I learned the trumpet and so on. In the kitchen. Okay, and then later I started learning percussion and hope that you're papers. And later on I kept going on in my music career. And then page one. All right, give yourself a round of applause. You are able to say the word peace. Okay, so that's the first, right? Miso conference, everybody yelling the word boop. Okay, and while you went, well, I love watching the build up to that. Because when it said, on the count of three, I want you to say pooch or whatever, all of a sudden, all of you, became between the ages of five years old and ten years old. I some, saw some people going, <laughs> and then I saw some people going, oh my gosh, we flew this guy here. <laughs> what are we nuts? And then the best part, I love this, 
the guys that are all sitting in the back, that were too cool to sit in the front, when they said poop, they said poop, and they raised up and high five. <laughs> and they're giving high fives back there. Okay? They probably still say that word till today. So why did I start this off like this? We're talking about inclusion. Okay? And today I want to present something that might be a little bit different in your thoughts about inclusion. Because inclusion, in my opinion, is it is the product of exclusion. And I would argue that it's not that quiet student that's sitting in the back of the room or that naughty student that's saying the word poo that's being excluded or who needs inclusion in the classroom. I would actually say that it's all of us here as teachers. That inclusion starts with all of us as educators. And it starts with the word like poop. Let me explain. I work with grades K through five. And earlier in, earlier in my career, I worked in the preschool sector. And then I have a great opportunities to collaborate with high school and middle school. And as a teacher, I don't care what grade you're in, you will come to this point in the school year, and it might not be happening now, or it might be, where you're saying, settle down, settle down, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, shh, shh, quiet, quiet, look at me, 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 shh, shh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative numbers, this one, this one. And, and we're trying, and we've got these three kids in the front, and they're like, yes, I'm with you. Right there. <laughs> and then you get the one student in the back of the room who says one word, poop. And all the kids laugh. They all look at him. He has their undivided attention, 100%. One word, one word, and they're all looking at him. Who is excluded in this? <laughs> it is not him. He knows group control. He was able to do it in one word. You went down to decimals, <laughs> fractions, okay? He did it in one word. Can we learn from that? We definitely can. How many of us would love to have that type of focus in our classroom. When we can say one word, and they are there, focused in what we're saying, in what we are doing, with one word. <laughs> Desperate. <Yeah. laughs> now I'm not asking everybody to go into your classrooms and say the word poop. That's not it at all. But the reason why I'm able to talk about this and be able to somewhat consider myself the expert, not the expert in poop, but the expert is because growing up, I was the kid who was able to say that word and get everybody's attention all the time. And believe it or not, it happens in high school too. We have those assemblies, right? And the principal or someone's up there and all of a sudden you hear that big, huge, tough center in the football team, he yells out, yeah, go Bulldogs! <laughs> Three words. Everybody looks at it and they clap. Right? So, I was this kid. I was this kid. And what I want to do today is kind of share with you a little dip into my past, my self story. And I believe that if we can understand how their brains function, how they work, and the greatness that's attached to them. Poop by itself, there's no greatness there. But there is something behind it that speaks to every single one of them, and apparently to the guys in the back, giving the high fives up there. So this is our, this is our goal. Well, that's awfully dark. I'm actually Japanese and... <laughs> So a little tiger. You did go to the 
ni ce la. Well, that's me right there. Kind of this blur right there. I'm one years old. My mother, my dad. That's where we want to start. Graduation. That's where we want to finish, right? This is the beginning, the beginning, and the end. Okay? How do we get there with someone like me? In the beginning, you look at this little boy right here and you say to yourself, this child has the potential for greatness. He can do anything. Do not judge the haircut. <laughs> My mom had a lot of lace bowls. It just went right out of here. <laughs> but a sweet young boy who goes to school and um, kindergarten's okay, he's a little different. There were moments of times when he was a little quiet, found himself doing his own thing. There were times where he was off saying crazy things just so everyone could look at him. Okay? What does that lead you to in the public school sector? IEP. Everyone comes together to talk about you, to tell you how special you are. Right? And so this is how special I thought I was. This is second grade. <laughs> hmm. Highlight of my life. <laughs> Travel across the nation to show people this picture of myself. So, in this meeting, I have this wonderful form and I keep it with me. It was the IEP evaluation that they gave to my mom. She gave it to me later after we had gone through this journey. And basically on it, it says, your son will probably not graduate from high school. And the second thing it said is you should encourage him to take up a trade. Go to a trade school. And my mother said, okay, fine, whatever. Okay, and so moving on. So I went through school. And while I was going to school, I don't think I saw faces like you before. In fact, um, right after I graduated from college, I went back to this school, because they had let go of their music teacher, and I said, I'll volunteer there and teach music for a little while. And I saw my fifth grade music teacher, she came up to me, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you're still here? <laughs> she was like, I was just 21 when I worked here. I was like, really? It's incredible. <laughs> so, growing up through school, it was different. They diagnosed me as being ADHD, and dyslexia. It's a, it's a common diagnosis that happens all the time. And this talk today doesn't necessarily pertain to just students who are ADHD or dyslexic. It pertains to any student that doesn't feel included in the classroom. And it's my goal to help you feel that, um, help them to be included in that. So, elementary school was tough for an ADHD kid like myself. Why? Well, I remember in the fourth grade, I had this teacher. Her name was Miss Takata. And she was as mean as it sounded. She smoked outside. <laughs> and it was our job to get her her coffee. Uh, in her words, it was fetch her her coffee. So we'd fetch her her coffee. She'd go for a smoke break outside. She'd come back in. And I never, ever, ever saw recess one day. Kindergarten. So here's this kid. Okay? I never saw one day of recess. And what she would do, and I thought this was really a bit cruel, but she would have us sit outside on the sidewalk right by the recess, and we'd write sentences about things that we could improve on. And I thought, I'm going to beat this lady. I'm special. Okay? I'm going to beat her. So one day I took my pencil and I held it up, and I went, and I broke the tip. And I thought, there are no pencil sharpeners out here. Ms. Takata, I cannot do my sentences right now. I can't do them at all. She said, oh, no problem. That's how I remember her voice. But it, she was probably 21. Oh, no. And then she began to sharpen my pencil with a pocket knife. <laughs> 
How does this relate to inclusion? Are we doing the same thing over and over and over again? Albert Einstein, right? He said, are we doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result? Sentences. That's what sentences were. Where they're doing something over and over and over again. So I don't assume any of us here are um, sharpening pencils with a pocket knife or sitting our kids out and watching them drool over the playground. But are we saying the same things? If you can hear me, clap, if you can hear me, touch your head. Look at me, focus, 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 look at me. Okay? Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Are we snappers? <laughs> huh? Are we doing the same thing over and over and over again and we're expecting different results? Well, you're not going to get it. It didn't happen with me. Did I ever see resist? No, I didn't. Okay? So it didn't happen. So I'm thinking, hey, let's go to middle school, intermediate, I went to King Intermediate. Let's see if we get different results there. So I'm at King Intermediate and I go to my first dance. Okay? And they've got the light and the speakers and everything and right in between. And this was back in the day when bigger was better as far as the DJs were concerned. It wasn't, it wasn't like this where you don't see any speakers at all. It's just like phantom voice. <laughs> but they had these huge speakers and in between had this guy who was going chicka 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 chicka. And I said, oh my gosh, I want to be him. He is special. I want to be that guy. So I told my dad, I'm going to be a DJ, a professional DJ someday. So what he did was he took me down to the state tax license office. He said, all right, boy, here's $19. You're going to earn it back. You go take out your business license. You're a DJ. Great. Picked out my DBA. I was MC Rhythm. Okay. And this is where I want to introduce this idea of greatness. Okay. Because when we're saying, listen, 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 look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, okay? We're beginning to overlook the fact that these children are not just sitting back there idly. They're sitting back there and they're dreaming and they're thinking of ways that they can be a contributor in this world. They're looking for opportunities to have greatness. So my dad, who was a Hawaiian music musician, he was an optometrist by, by occupation, but he played music in town. And he had these, these tall speakers, they're PA speakers, and they didn't have great sound. Anyways, walking home from school, I catch the bus, and um, if you know Kane Ohe, just before you go up the hill to Hawaiian Memorial, there's Windward City Shopping Center right there. And um, I would always get off the bus there early, so I could go to this one store called Music Mac. And in Music Mac, they sold sound equipment, huge speakers, all kinds of lights and turntables and the works. And this lady that worked there, she was the general manager, um, and you're going to know that these kids have confidence. She comes up to me one day, she goes, you know, I see you come in here all the time. You're always looking at everything, and you're, you're, you know, you're so young. I say, oh yeah, I'm a DJ. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, I, I'm a DJ. She's like, you're the youngest DJ I ever saw. I know. I have a license. <laughs> She's like, well, that is great because my son, my high school son, is having his birthday party, and I can never find someone that knows their music, you know, the type of music they listen to, this, this hip-hop, pop, hip-hop stuff, and you should come and DJ my son's party. I said, no problem. <laughs> she said, how much do you charge? And I had not thought of that. While someone was yelling at me, listen, 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 I hadn't even thought of that. And then I thought to myself, and then I, I have the answer. She goes, how, how much do you charge? I said, a lot. <laughs> she goes, well, I can only afford $200. I said, what? <laughs> I'm in the middle school, $200, that is a lot of money. I said, I'll, I'll take $200 from you, yeah, no problem. And she said, she said well, it's got to be good, it's got to be big. Boom, instantly. Right? The potential for greatness. What's happening? Ideas are sparking. I'm getting all these thoughts, these ideas. I said, oh, I've got greatness. I have the potential for greatness. You will, have, you will get your money's worth. I'm thinking $200 money's worth, which in my mind is like $2 million worth of money's worth of greatness. It's got to be huge. So we get there to this big, huge warehouse, air conditioned, maybe about twice the size of this room. Windows closed, nice and cool and cozy. I got my lights 
I got my two little police lights there. I got my brothers because they were my recruits. They were over there with flashlight. <laughs> faster, faster. That's not quite a strong light. That's not a... I'm popping in my mixtapes that I kicked off the radio. Oh yeah, I'm good. I'm doing my thing. And then all of a sudden she goes, hey, we're going to bring out the birthday cake. And um, we're going to sing Happy Birthday. I go, oh, this is my potential for greatness. It's happening right now. So, she didn't know this because I had planned it out while teachers were yelling at me, listen, 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 snap me. And I had planned it out. My dad, he had been saving this 100,000 strand fireworks in his closet. Potential for greatness. Okay? So I take it and they light the cans, happy birthday, they sing the song, and then I say, Happy birthday, Junior, whatever his name was then. <laughs> and I light it up. <laughs> Next thing you know, the ambulance is there. <laughs> the <laughs> we're choking, we're coughing. Okay, okay, and then I walk out to the car, and my dad, we're loading it up, and my dad said, How was it? I said, It was great. <laughs> they never saw anything like it before. Ever. <laughs> He said, that's fantastic. Did you get paid? I said, oh no, wait, hold on, I'll be right back. Excuse me. <laughs> she paid me. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> the potential for greatness. I had it. I had the potential for greatness. And needless to say, um, nobody ever saw it. Because it was covered up with these terms like special that wasn't really special. And then we had things like student of concern. Oh, they weren't really concerned with me, right? They weren't really concerned with me, right? To be included means that you have to be nobody. You have to be just like everybody, which wasn't somebody. You were nobody. The only person that was somebody was the person snapping their fingers at you. One last story. I know I'm running short on time, but I want to just go right into this. Oh, look, again. I'm a PGM. <laughs> we had a 50th reunion at the Polynesian Cultural Center, and um, they said, Which section will you be dancing in? And my, my Samoan friend said, Oh, he's Fijian. <laughs> so I danced in the 50th anniversary of the Fijian, and it was a lot of fun. It didn't end there. When I was a senior in high school, so, for, so far we have this idea of greatness. Then we have this idea of not repeating something and expecting different results. The last idea that I want to put out there is this idea of creativity and the results found with creativity. So when I was um, a senior in high school, and as you know, senior year is, that's a great year for everybody, right? You go to prom, you go to state champs for swimming, you can wear a Speedo like a champ and be proud of it. <laughs> okay? And so I decided one day that we were having May Day, I was going to be somebody, not nobody. I wasn't gonna be this person that followed everybody. And I had a Tongan teacher who taught English, who didn't speak English. <laughs> and she said, does anybody know the Samoan Fire Night Dance? What an opportunity. <laughs> I do. You know, someone said once to me, and, and I, I always used to look back at myself and put myself down and say, those were lies. <laughs> and then one day, this person who was me, who was ADHD, and he said, he said, they're not lies. We are just great storytellers. He said, perfect, I'm a great storyteller. So I said, I know someone on Fire Night Dance. I know it. And so I went home and I told my mom, my mom, and she was used to this by now, I'm a senior in high school, I said, we're gonna do the Samoan Fire Night Dance. And I said, first I said, we're, and you're gonna help me make one. So we built one. We built our own Samoan Fire Night Dance. She said, do you know how to do this? I said, of course I do. She goes, of course he does. He knows how to do anything. So I made one, and I ran out there in the middle of the gym. This is actually the gym, if you can see it. 
and I took out my knife, I lit it on fire, Tofa! <laughs> and for the first time in my life, as so I remember it, everybody was looking at me, or the fire, <laughs> and wondering why me had the fire. <laughs> and I had it up there, and I did my knife, and I started spitting my knife. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, People started cheering. And they started doing this thing. I love it. It's like, my cup, my cup. <laughs> Never happened in my entire life. They were trying to my cup. So you know what that made me do? I am fast. ADHD. <laughs> and, and the more they chanted, the faster I spin that. Like, <laughs> and I'm spinning it, and I'm spinning it, and all of a sudden, which I thought was on there, the peanut that was holding the fire onto my knife went flying. <laughs> and in slow motion they went, my god. Students in the lecture. Okay? 
Are you excluding peers and colleagues? How can you begin to teach this if we're not doing it within our faculties, our administration, within our staff? Okay? So start with yourself. Okay? Teacher's lounge is the only place to eat your lunch. Second thing, when you see a student of concern, lose the label. They're not a student of concern. They're a person. They're not special ed. They really are special. But that has no meaning today. Okay? Recreate that word. Okay? They're not anything. They're people. They have a name. Okay? They're not part of an IEP report. All right? And then look for opportunities to expose their greatness. Okay? Don't let them say, I know the fire knife dance. Find that child and say, do you want to learn the fire knife dance? I have someone that can teach you. Expose their greatness. Okay? Make those connections. And then the last one. It's a little harsh. <laughs> Don't say that word. Shut up and listen. Stop saying, settle down. Be quiet and listen to me. Okay? Because do you want to know what the translation of the word poop is? Settle down. Be quiet. And listen to me. Thank you.